I opened a session for a fairly typical pop song and I'm in the mix window of that session. So let's take a look at how the tracks are laid out here. On the left is some drum stuff, and then we work our way through some percussion stuff, more drum stuff. As I move to the right, more drums and percussion, a beat groove, working our way through some synth kind of stuff. There's acoustic guitar, bass, more guitar, theremin. So this is sort of the color and the harmony of the track. A bit more percussion over here. And then we start to work our way into the mixed stuff over here. So there's a long verb. Why isn't he over there with these other oxes? Let's come back to that. Here's the lead vocal. There's some harmony vocals. And then four aux tracks containing different types of texture plugins. And then a master fader off on the right. The levels of these effects returns are not all zero. So let's talk about that. We have two delays and we have two reverbs. And that's pretty typical for a pop song. The slap delay return is down a lot and the stereo delay is down a little. And the other two are at zero. Why are these delay faders not at zero? Why not leave the return faders up here at zero and then just turn down all the sends? Well, sometimes you have in your mix the desire to have this effect come in at the chorus or on a bridge, but not at other parts of the song. So you would want to lower the volume of the return versus changing all the volumes of the sends. It's just a more efficient way to do it. So let's see how these things are patched. On the slap, they're using mod delay three. There are green lines around all these parameters and we'll get to that when we cover automation. The mod delay is going through a lo-fi. Lo-fi is in the harmonic section. And then from the lo-fi, it goes to an EQ. The EQ is a shelf at about 600 Hertz. And a shelf is a gradual roll off as opposed to a high pass filter, which is kind of a more dramatic roll off. It's called a shelf because it looks like there's a layer here and a layer there, and then they're connected. So they look like shelves on a wall. Let me close the CQ. In terms of getting sent to all these effects, there's only one track that gets all of them, the verb, the echo, and that's the lead vocal. Now to the left of the lead vocal is this long verb. Looking through the sends here, it looks like the only guys really going to the long verb are that sort of middle section of texture stuff, which is a little bit of guitar and a little bit of keys. And these drums over here on the far left really don't go to that long verb. So they're creating a texture by sending some of the stuff, this middle rhythm section kind of stuff to the long verb. And then nobody over here on the right really gets to go there. So I think that was the intention of moving this track over here was to sort of remind the mixer that this ends a chapter here and this stuff on the right is processed different than this stuff over there. And we know how to name a track, but we don't know how to name a bus yet. Let's review that. So we go to Setup, I.O., and then the Bus tab allows you to name Instead of bus one, bus two, bus three, you can have custom names for buses in your mix. If you inherit a mix and you want to change them all, you can easily hit default and they will go back to their original names of numbers versus these descriptive adjectives. Let me cancel out of here. Sometimes when you're listening to a mix, you want to hear it dry without all the processing. So you could just mute the returns and get that effect. Pro Tools gives us a way to bypass as well. So we can bypass all the inserts. And when we do that, we won't hear anything coming back off of those tracks. So let me uncheck the all, and we should get back to hearing everything. You can also mute the sends here in that same window. If a tile is blue, that means it's been bypassed temporarily. So that's an easy way to see what it's like with and without. And then if it turns red, that means that the send level has been exceeded. There's been digital clipping. You want to back off the level if the tile itself is red. And one last thing for mixing that's helpful, I'm going to jump to the transport window. So window transport. Let's bring this over here. This button 
fade in saves you from having an instant full volume when you hit play. Let's say you're mixing the loudest part of the song, and when you hit play, it just blares through your speakers. So fade in allows you to ramp up the volume to that full volume so that you're not overloading your speakers at one instant. You activate it with that button, deactivate it with that same button.